<laughs> At last! I look on the outside the way I've always felt on the inside. Mm. Oh, the buttocks. The real longtime followers who've been here since the start <clears throat> will remember Skyhab. The hamster space station intended to be suspended from a weather balloon at 400 feet in the air, anchored with a 1,000-pound rated fishing line. The original plan was to launch it with a single balloon, 7 feet in diameter. That was really expensive. I have one. I'm starting to think a better plan is to launch it with a bunch of 3-foot diameter balloons. They're much cheaper. That's about as big as party balloons get. The problem now is the helium, but we're not here today to launch Skyhab. Unfortunately, that's a ways in the future still. We are here to witness hamster flight. It is a warm, sunny day. However, I have my fan here to cool Jade off. Being that Jade misbehaved in the last video, she's going to be the intrepid test pilot after I fly it once with no hamster inside. I have to make sure that the weight is balanced and everything. I'm going to put some placeholder stuff inside of the capsule to make sure that it doesn't affect how the drone flies. And I brought a spare battery so I can do two flights today. Test weights are loaded. These will shift around, but they should because the hamster is also going to be shifting its weight around. Okay, I'd call that pretty successful. I swapped it from one cell to two because two was heavier than a hamster and was giving the rubber band trouble. I don't think it'll be difficult with the hamster. Hamsters do not weigh much, at least dwarf ones do not. And I'll be flying at low altitude for the first flight. So if there's any issues, uh, she will not have far to fall. There she is, ready to choose the impossible like never before. One hundred feet and holding. There she is at two hundred feet. You can barely see her, but she's up there, choosing the impossible at four hundred feet. Here she is, back to Earth. She just landed. Let's see how she's doing. You can there? I only see. Oh, there she is. How do you feel to be a groundbreaking pioneer in the field of hamster flight? Well, that was a short video. If the video quality just took a dive, it's because my phone has died. It won't boot past that screen, and I tried all the hard reset uh, shit I found on the internet. Uh, it's just fucked. Uh, that battery swelling a month or two ago must have fucked up more inside than I realized. Anyway, that's my only phone and camera gone. Um, I'm now filming with one of the little button cams that I used as external cameras on the first flight of the hamster drone. Anyway. Um, there's a good reason why this video is short and why there's not more content. Um, 
I have to move. I really have to move. Uh, those of you who paid attention during the last video or who follow my Twitter know that one of my roommates skipped town without warning very recently. And he did so mid-month without paying his last month's rent. We had to take that out of his deposit. Uh, fled to Texas. The, the landlady doesn't want to pursue litigation just because it would cost more than it's worth. And she blames it all on me. Uh, her understanding was that I was responsible for whatever any of the other renters do. So she doesn't have to deal with them. She only has to deal with me. And being that I'm a naive spurg and didn't realize I was being taken advantage of, I agreed to that. Uh, consequently, in the past, when I have not been able to fill a room, uh, my roommate, Jesse, the one who stuck around, has refused to pay and I was left to cover the entire amount out of pocket. Well, this month, it was his responsibility to fill the room. He swore up and down his buddy was going to move in. On the first, his buddy backed out of it because apparently never had the money for it. And uh, Jesse still refuses to pay. It's not even a large amount because, again, uh, most of, of June's rent was going to be covered by the deposit of the guy who skipped out. It's only going to be like 167 but uh, Jesse really pinches those pennies, man. Uh, he was willing for both of us to get kicked out rather than spend 167 to cover his turn uh, given that he he's the one who failed to fill the room this time uh, this is the same guy who threatened to beat me up that I had to call the cops on who informed me that threatening to beat somebody up is not an actionable crime fortunately he's the guy who uh, came into my room once and forced me to stop what I was doing and come to the bathroom with him as he followed me uh, because I had been trimming my beard and some of the little hairs had gotten into the sink and I had not washed them out. Uh, they would have been gone the next time anybody ran the sink but he was so perturbed by this because he has a pet peeve about hair um, in the sink that he stood there and blocking my exit uh, while he waited for me to wash the hairs out of the sink by hand uh, while he filmed me without my consent using his phone uh, for his friends on Facebook to make fun of um, only for a minute or two because I can only guess they did not find him bullying an autistic man into cleaning at midnight uh, as funny as he did or as funny as he hoped that they would find it so what does this mean for my future? I don't really know. I'm scared. Uh, I don't know what's going to become of me. Uh, I'm resourceful. I'm going to I'm going to try to figure something out. I have to be out by the end of June. I want to be out well before that. I don't want to be here anymore. The, the other that guy Jesse, uh, he He's been kind of a nightmare to live with. Uh, he's been stable. He always pays his rent. He requires me to take screenshots of all the bills in the exact amounts and, and text or email the, them to him so he can ensure he's paying only the exact amount. And this is the guy who had me do an audit of everything he's ever paid and provide bills for you know, records for all the months he's paid convinced that I was overcharging him because I had generalized the amount to about a hundred per month only to discover in the end that he owned, owed me fifty dollars I had been overpaying but I was content to let that slide if he was but he wasn't because you know he's he's a graveler like my landlady and uh... What's the, what has the outcome been? Uh, he uh, we both have to move out now um, but like I've said, uh, there are some silver linings to this mushroom cloud. And one of them is getting away from Jesse, who also tried to to uh, gaslight me, by the way. He tried to convince me that my recollection was wrong and that every, every past roommate of the four we've had, besides him, has moved out because of me. Uh, the first one, Josh, you, you guys have record. You, you saw he moved out because I evicted him. Because of the hamsters. 
So I don't know how, how he thought I was going to forget that. Second roommate was a guy I had forgotten about, a Nick, who was up front that he only was going to live here for one month because he, was, he wanted to move to Alaska with his girlfriend to work on a cruise ship. I had forgotten that. I had to text him uh, to find out the reason he moved out, to see if Jesse was lying to me or not. And he was emphatic, but he didn't move out because of me. That was always the plan. I only approved of him living here for one month because it was a way to avoid having to cover the missing rent out of pocket because, again, I knew Jesse w wasn't going to pay for it. Uh, the third roommate was a dear friend of mine, let's call her Kay, and uh, Kay did not move out because of me. She emphatically insisted that was never the reason. She wanted a shorter commute. She was miserable with a long commute in the cold winter months. She wanted to be closer to abo her boyfriend. She has never spared my feelings. Uh, I appreciate that about her. She always is brutally honest with me. So I know that I can trust her when she says that that's not the reason. Uh, I told Jesse that, and he said she was just being nice to me. She, like, she didn't want to hurt my feelings. But he does not know her the way that I know her, and she would never do that for me, or probably most of the other people in her life. She warned me, in fact, that he was, in fact, gaslighting me. Uh, she's the one that clued me into that and what that's about and said he's probably one of those people who just cannot stand to live with and have to interact daily with a person who is even mildly disabled. Some people just uh, have a loathing for anybody like that that they have to deal with that's just below the surface. And uh, whenever I bring up uh, the fact that you know stuff that's easy for him is hard for me, he just goes, well, I don't care that you're autistic, you're just using it as an excuse. Uh, I don't intend it as an excuse. I was always, I never said no to him. I was always willing to improve. He acknowledged that I had improved dramatically in keeping the sink clean, which was his big thing. Um, that didn't really matter uh, in the end. Um, he still had these attitudes and was still just hostile to me at every turn, just passive-aggressively hostile, sometimes openly aggressively, so it's, it's good to get away from him. Um, one of the upsides, let's talk about the positives, let's not just uh, be a downer about this. These, this is an opportunity in many respects, it's, a, it's an opportunity to get away from Jesse, it's an opportunity to get out of what was always a bad deal uh, for a naive renter who didn't know any better, um, and it's mostly just gotten lucky in the past with honest landlords. Um, I can perhaps move someplace closer to a natural body of water, maybe even an apartment that has a lawn in the back and uh, is within a couple dozen yards of a pond or something. Wouldn't that be uh, incredible? I could just bury the extension cord and nobody would be the wiser. And I'd have to bury the airline as well because I can't have anything showing. Uh, and I would just hope that nobody finds it suspicious that there's bubbles coming out of the pond. I, I'm keeping this on. Normally I take this off for serious messages, but you don't want to see me ugly cry. It's not pretty. Uh, mucus comes out. Um, sometimes I fart. Um, so th these are staying on. Um, and I just want to say, I just want to say how much I appreciate you guys. It was only because of you that I could live here to begin with and really focus on the, the project. Uh, before this blew up, I was delivering food to people wealthier than I am and college students who didn't see anything wrong with using their loan money to buy takeout. And that was a risky proposition because if you crash, your, you have any collision, while you're delivering food, your insurance does not pay for it because you don't have a commercial license, which is costly and difficult to get compared to a class uh, C or D license. It, it, so it was because of you in the first place that I was able to dedicate myself to this project full time. And I'll never lose sight of that. Even if this project, by some miracle, blows up even further, uh, I'll never lose sight of of the fact that I owe everything to you guys, uh, that you 
saw the spark of imagination in this project, that it resonated with you, with the plans that you've had when you were a kid that you never got around to or didn't have the resources to pull off, uh, I'll keep doing that. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to see this through because of everything that you've put into it so far. I can't let that be for nothing. I can't. I'm not. I'm. I won't. I'm, I'm going to keep. I'm going to figure something out. Let's put it that way. I'm a resourceful man. I mean, be even before I was doing deliveries, I uh, before the crypto market collapsed, I was paying for everything with internet bullshit money. Um, and I don't consider this year a total loss either because I've been able to use this time to cultivate uh, multiple other income streams and they're still kind of in the baby stage uh, but I'm building them up like the monetized YouTube like the merchandise page like my medium blog which I've been posting all of my old writing to um, Perhaps some of you enjoyed those stories on my Twitter. That's the kind of stuff I, I put up there. Um, Twitch. I'm kind of... Um, I kind of hope and don't hope that Twitch, my Twitch takes off. Because if it does, then I have to Twitch full-time. And most of the Twitch streamers who do that are miserable. I mean, they make a bundle at it. But if, you, if you've watched Vinny from Vine Sauce for any length of time, you can hear in his voice that he wants to die. Because playing video games, which is, used to be this great joy and passion in his life, has become a job and something he has no choice but to do. And he, he can't quit or take a break because you can lose uh, tens of thousands of, of subs if you do that. So um, I'm kind of scared of what it, you know what if it does take off and I have to shift my attention to that. Um, but if it gets if it gets medium sized the point where he's contributing a significant amount to my monthly income, but I don't have to make my whole life about that. That would be just about perfect. Um, I want to get the number of alternative income streams up to about seven. I'll feel secure when it's up to about seven, and and uh, I'm making enough from all these other projects that I don't have to rely so heavily on my Patreon money, because I in an ideal world, I would be bringing in money from other sources and I could spend all the Patreon money on hamster stuff. Certainly I'll have more to buy shit off Amazon with while I'm on vacation because I won't have to to pay the Graveler uh, f uh, nearly everything I make for rent and, and utilities. Mm. Yeah, this is overwhelming for me. I don't know how to how to quantify it. Um... I mean, shit, it's it's a good day when I wear the same color of socks in the morning, although that's actually why I bought all the same colors, so I don't have to do that. Or when, when I manage to get in the shower and not have my shirt still on or something. Uh, going to the grocery grocery store is harrowing, because there's fucking 70 different kinds of cereal. It, it's, it's paralyzing. Uh, so having to... Uh, shut off my utilities, having to call everybody, having to talk to people on the phone to shut off power and water and internet and gas. Uh, I just feel buried. I feel overwhelmed. I, um, I guess I'll just try to break it down into steps and handle things one at a time. So that's why my output is going to slow down. Uh, I hate to disappoint you guys. I wanted to do the, the hamster flight as the last thing before this sort of mini hiatus, which is not going to last long, no more than the length of the summer. Although I could, I could bring the drone with me on vacation and do some flights there. So there's still, there's still ideas for content. I just can't do, make a lot of progress on the habitats because I'm going to be using most of my energy and money uh, just moving my shit and and storing it so uh, that's what I, what most of my resources are going to be going towards for a little while uh, I hope you don't feel let down I hope you're not disappointed in me um, I didn't plan for this um, I hope you'll stick with me and support me um, and it I really 
especially the ones of you who I know by name because they've been with me since the start. They've been with me for a decade and they've always supported me. Uh, I know each one of you, we talk in the Discord. Um, you are my treasures. Um, you are why I'm able to live the life that I want to live, even if that didn't last for very long. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it through this. I'm gonna figure shit out. And I'm gonna swing it somehow so this works out better for me than staying here would have. Because when life gives you lemons, you construct some kind of uh, compressed air cannon and then you make lemon batteries out of the lemons so you can shoot electrified lemons right the fuck back at life is I think how that saying goes <laughs>